What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another How to Build Around This Commander video. Again, if you appreciate these or any videos I create, please subscribe to the channel. Really helps me out here. 37,000 subs, that's incredible. We're going to be talking about how to build around the commander option from Battle for Baldur's Gate, Jan Jansen Chaos Crafter. That name I just can't get over because to me it sounds like a news anchor. This is Jan Jansen with Channel 3 News. But for three mana and Mardu colors, what you have here with this Gnome Artificer is the most obvious combo commander in years. I mean, the two abilities just trade off for one another. We have Haste, and the first ability says sacrifice an artifact creature to create two treasure tokens, and you can sacrifice a non-creature artifact, which would be a treasure token if you wanted to, to create two a 1-1 one -one colorless construct artifact creature tokens, which would be the artifact creatures that you could sacrifice for the first ability. Immediately after seeing that, I knew that this would be a combo card. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to be talking about more than just the combos. We'll save that for the end. We're going to look at the core strategy here, which is a lot more than just going infinite and sealing the deal right then and there. We want to be able to synergize with our treasure tokens. Since we're in perfect colors to do that, that's going to serve as a rock solid backbone for this deck. Treasure tokens are great for mana production. There's an entire strategy that was already built around treasure tokens. So they're a lot more than what they used to be going back to Exelon, where it was more just extra mana. Here you even have wind cons. You have ways of getting through your deck. Another core strategy for this commander is going to be the use of fodder, sacrificing good non-creature artifacts and artifact creatures so that we're not just relying on what Jan Jansen can produce himself. And since we're going to be dealing with a lot of artifacts anyway, we're going to want to build around this commander with plenty of artifact synergies. And of course, the highlight of this commander is the ability to combo. So for just looking at the treasure token synergies, we have some two new ones from Battle for Baldur's Gate. Probably the best one for this specific commander is Prized Statue. When it enters or is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you get a treasure token. Mahadi Emporium Master is also potentially a strong card for this commander. If we end up killing off a lot of our own artifact creatures, we we will be compensated at the beginning of the next end step, receiving a treasure token for each one. Might be a bit confusing if you have to keep track of how many you've been sacrificing, but if it's just on a three mana creature like this, I think it's worth paying attention. If you're going to be playing any kind of artifact or treasure strategy, these four are going to be perfect. It's also for combos. Zorn, Academy Manufacturer, getting you plenty of what you need. Even Academy Manufacturer is giving you clues and foods that you don't usually want to crack anyway. You primarily want your treasure tokens for your combos. Pitiless Plunderer is a big combo piece for this deck. You are going to be sacrificing a bunch of those artifact creatures. You're also getting another treasure each time you do that. And Goldspan Dragon doubles the value that we're getting off of our treasures. Some other synergies here with treasure tokens, we have Dockside Extortionist. Not really a combo piece with our commander specifically, but you can incorporate other combos with Dockside Extortionist. Since it's getting a reprint in Double Masters 2022, I think it's perfect to mention. Professional Facebreaker is an example of using treasure tokens to actually get through your deck a little bit quicker. You can sacrifice a treasure to exile the top card of your library and you get to play that card this turn. And Ruthless Technomancer is maybe the most underrated black card of the year. When it enters, you sacrifice another creature you control and then you gain a number of treasure tokens equal to that creature's power. Its activated ability is actually really strong, allowing you to bring back creatures from your graveyard for sacrificing artifacts. And Revel and Riches is a win con. We have a lot of ways of producing treasure tokens with our commander. If we save up some of those, we might be able to win. Even if we don't and have has a great trigger where we get treasure tokens anyway. Now we move on to fodder. You need fodder, you need ways of enabling our commander outside of what he can do himself. And you need creatures like these, which will also help you to replenish your hand. Mirror Retriever, Junk Diver, Workshop Assistant, Scrap Trawler, all kind of do the same thing. Scrap Trawler obviously being a little bit better, but whenever we sacrifice one of these, or in Scrap Trawler's case, any artifact, we will then be able to bring back another artifact card from our graveyard to our hand. You don't necessarily have to play all of these, but you should play at least two of them, preferably Mirror Retriever and Scrap Trawler. Other artifact fodder that I think would be great, we have Ikor Wellspring. This is an example of a non-creature artifact that we can sacrifice for fodder, meaning once we do this, we'll get the construct tokens instead of the treasure tokens. Great value off of this when it enters and when it's put in the graveyard, we will draw a card. Hanger Backwalker is a token machine. Mana Sink as well, we put a bunch of mana into it, and then we sacrifice it, we'll still end up with a bunch of artifact tokens. Treasure Keeper I've always thought was an underrated card, allowing you to reveal a non-land card with converted mana cost 3 
three or less off the top of your library is going to be very useful in an artifact combo deck where a lot of our combo pieces are going to be cheaper anyway. Worm Coil Engine I think is a safe card to put in this deck because even if you're not using it for sack fodder, it's just a beast that puts in a ton of work. Now we talk about some artifact synergies here and a big one because we are playing red, we're going to be talking about scrapping, making use out of our artifacts in our graveyard, sacrificing artifacts that we control. Goblin Welder has been a great card in red forever. You could sacrifice an artifact token if you want to to bring back a better artifact from your graveyard to the battlefield. Goblin Engineer for the purpose of combos is even better because it's a tutor for our graveyard, so even if we don't really have anything in our graveyard already, this is going to be situationally much better than Goblin Welder. Doretti Scrap Savant is all around a powerhouse in any type of artifact strategy. It's a great card draw engine, great way to bring back artifacts, and if you happen to get to that alt, it is pretty incredible. And Oscar the Reconstructor is a newer one from Commander 2021, making use out of artifact cards in our graveyard, giving us two token copies that are copies of an exiled card that we chose. But probably the most important artifact synergies that you can include in a Jan Jansen deck would be any kind of artifact that can turn Jan Jansen into an artifact. So Liquid Metal Coating, Liquid Metal Torque, Silver Skin Armor, Mycosynth Lattice can all make a non-artifact an artifact. If you are interested in really comboing with this commander, I would say these are must-haves. If you do not feel like comboing, if you have no interest in going infinite, then the benefits of doing this are significantly lower. So let's talk about these combos here. We have quite a few, and most of it's interchangeable. First big combo is with Pitiless Plunderer. If we use the cards Ashnod's Altar and Umbral Mantle, how we do this is that we tap Chan Chanson to sacrifice a treasure token, or really any non-creature artifact that isn't our combo piece, to then create two 1-1 one -one constructs. We then sacrifice the two constructs to Ashnod's Altar for four total constructs colorless mana. Since we sacrificed two creatures, Pitiless Plunderer will also give us two treasure tokens. We use three of the four colorless, provided we have Umbral Mantle already equipped to Jan Jansen, to then untap Jan Jansen using the ability it gives them. We rinse and repeat, and that right there in pretty much every deck is enough to win. Again, most of the pieces here, with the exception of Pitiless Plunderer, are interchangeable, so you could use Sword of the Peroons. It's a little bit more expensive than Umbral Mantle to equip, but it effectively works the same way. Krark Clan Ironworks will also also sacrifice an artifact to do the same exact thing as Ashnod's altar, it's just one more mana expensive. And Staff of Domination is, again, a little bit more expensive. You are going to have to both untap Jan Jansen with its ability and untap the Staff of Domination itself. But since you're also getting mana off of Pitiless Plunderer, you're still going to end up floating infinite color mana, and you're going to be able to use that for the other abilities here on Staff of Domination to pretty much win. Other big combo here, again, a lot of interchangeable pieces, but the core piece of the combo is Clock of Omens. We tap two untapped artifacts we control to untap a target artifact. Using any of the cards that I mentioned, that can turn Jan Jansen into an artifact, that alone will be enough to just go infinite, create infinite tapped treasure tokens, create infinite tapped construct creatures, so that does work. However, if you are interested in winning on the spot, because that won't include any kind of trigger like a Disciple of the Vault, so that when we're looping this, it's going to kill all of our opponents. All of the other pieces are possible here. Liquid Metal Torque, Reckless Fire Weaver works, Silver Skin Armor, Agent of the Iron Throne, which is a new card from Battle for Baldur's Gate, Mycosynth Lattice, Marionette Master. It all works, and in black, you're going to be playing plenty of tutors. White, red, you have other tutors for artifacts. It really shouldn't be difficult to get these combo pieces together, seeing as two big ones are Clock of Omens and Pitiless Plunderer. So anyway, let me know what you think about Jan Jans and Chaos Crafter. The purpose behind these how to build around videos, it's not a straight up deck tech. It's just to give you a brief understanding of how to build around the commander, just fundamentally what that commander is capable of being. I will admit that you do lose quite a bit if you decide to ignore the combos, because that's the real appeal here behind Jan Jansen. You have haste on a creature, which means that you can combo immediately. Great abilities can work as an engine with other cards. If you enjoyed the video again, please do subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate it. Commander Void here signing off. I will see you all next time.